Hey everybody, it's Chris from Prepare Mind 101, and I'm out here for the weekend with Will. We're just doing some field test stuff. We're not, we're not out surviving or anything like that. You drive out to the woods, get your stuff out, and you test it. It's that simple. So what I wanted to do a quick video on since I set this up is originally I was going to set up a grabber heat sheet or a grabber all-weather blanket lean-to like Will does. But when I was driving up here, I had an idea. I wanted to experiment a little bit, uh, get the base camp in a bag back out, and use it a different way than we did last time. Uh, the first time I did the video on the base camp in the bag, we had to quickly shelter a bunch of people from a lot of rain. So using the tarp that's in it, which is a 19 by 11 tarp, we were able to make... A rather large shelter that everybody could get in under until it got done raining. Now we're going to be out here tonight and the lows supposed to be down around uh, between 15 and 20. So what I wanted to try this time was just quickly setting up kind of an A-frame style tarp shelter and demonstrate why the components in the base camp in a bag uh, the way the reason I have them in there is you can come up with just about any type of shelter on the fly it doesn't have to be this type of shelter or that type of shelter you can do something really simple close it up however you want to stake it down nice and easy so you don't have to learn all this different stuff so let's take a look at my awesome intro that everybody loves and then we'll get to it So let's go back to the main parts of the base camp in a bag. The key parts in which uh, allow you to do pretty much anything you want. So the first part, so I always have at least one of these large figure nine carabiners. You want to do things easy, have one of these. So what I was able to do is take one piece of paracord, put a loop in it, wrap it around the tree, bring it back over here, tie a loop right there bring it around the tree put it on the figure nine cinch it up nice and tight and then tie it off ridge line in about 45 seconds and I don't know if I said it this blue tarp isn't part of my shelter Wills is hanging it up right here the second most important thing is to have a lot of these uh, you've seen these before in my videos they're one of the most useful tools out there for making any type of tent shelter these are tarp clips now there's different types of tarp clips out there there's a tar the tarp clips with the slide blocks I highly recommend getting the ones with the uh, screw tighteners you'll be able to be t get it down tighter it's a lot more secure so first part would be uh, attaching the tarp to the ridge line on either end that's going to keep it from going just about anywhere and then when you're dealing with this large very large uh, tarp the 11 by 19 it's not an even uh, there, it's not an even dimension to where everything lines up just right but what you can do is stake it down a couple places and then all you got to do is cinch the free parts up and then clamp it with the tarp clip and then you could stake it out it doesn't matter if it's not perfect same thing here you can also uh, directly attach it to the tarp and then drive your stake straight through it and then whichever way so everything is lined up nice and tight you can just stake it exactly where it needs to be you don't have to rely on grommets and then if you're going to cl close it up, you can have one on standby so that you can close your tarp together. Now I'll come back to that in a moment, but the next thing is the stakes themselves. 
I highly recommend using these aluminum nail type stakes. Now those plastic pieces will probably end up breaking off at some point. But these aluminum stakes are going to fit through all the different holes, whether it's through the tarp clips or the grommets in the tarp, whatever it's going to be, it's going to work. And they're not going to break like the plastic ones will. That's the problem with the plastic ones. In the, in the, the cheap aluminum ones, they can bend and stuff like that. So whether, especially when it gets to winter, when the ground's frozen, you want something that's hard, that's gonna penetrate that ground, that's not gonna break. Now let's go around to the other side. Now I'll show you what I did here in a minute. So key components, the tarp itself, the paracord, the figure nine, at least six of those tarp clips, at least six of those stakes. Now this stake right here, I've just got that stake down because I was making sure that it closed up right. I can take that out, flip this up so when we have our fire going tonight, which is going to be right over here, my tarp shelter is going to be open to the fire. Now if it gets down late at night and we want to let the fire die out, we're going to have a secondary uh, set of wood for our quick fire in the morning covered up with plastic. But you can see, I've got plenty of room in here. Got my sleep system. I was experimenting with this. This is something I picked up for my emergency car kit. I just wanted to see how well they worked. It's okay. Uh, but I closed this tarp all off and, cin and cinched it down with the tarp clips. So maybe you're in a situation, again, the base camp in the bag is part of my car kit. It's made to be able to just adapt to whatever situation. So I wanted to see how well these heaters worked and definitely uh, work pretty good if you can close your stuff up pretty tight, but you gotta make sure you've got some ventilation too uh, whenever you're using this type of heater. Now the last thing I did differently from what I usually do, because I wanted to be comfortable tonight, I've learned my lesson many nights sleeping on the ground. So I, what, I, what I tried was I made sure I had my cold steel shovel with me and I basically dug a trench in the ground at least for the, the section of my torso. So my back down to uh, about down to my knees and then I stuffed that trench with a couple tarp tarp loads full of leaves so I've got a nice leaf bed underneath the tarp that I'm laying on and let me tell you it is a thousand times more comfortable than laying straight on the ground so that's going to give me two things it's going to give me insulation and it's going to give me comfort the downside to this is I was in such a hurry to get out here <laughs> I grabbed the wrong freaking sleeping bag. The one I was supposed to bring out here to test is at home and I grabbed my MMSS sleep system instead. So the one I was looking forward to sleeping in is about 60 miles away. So crap. But the initial test that I, I ran on this, again, I set this up probably in about 15 minutes because I hadn't set it up this way before and I was just kind of tinkering with it till I got it the way that I wanted. Now that I've kind of set this size tarp up and I know how to do it, I could probably do it in less than 10. But again, if you don't have the ability to make a fire, that heater definitely makes a difference, at least for temporarily warming you up. Or maybe in the morning when it's nice and freezing, uh, before you get up and get moving, get your boots back on, you can get up, crank that heat on for a few minutes, warm up, get dressed, then get outside and start your fire out here. The nice thing about the base camp in a bag idea and system is all the components are relatively inexpensive. That large tarp, it's a five mil camouflage tarp, cost me, it was on sale, about 16 bucks. Four packs of those tarp clips generally will run you about five bucks 
I get those aluminum stakes at Harbor Freight and you get about six or eight of them I forget which I want to say six for $2.99 everybody's got paracord and these run about six bucks so you have a very very modular shelter system that you can literally set up dozens of ways and it doesn't cost you a whole heck of a lot of money now this is not a survival shelter this is not a something that you pack in your in your backpack if you're doing the backpacking thing like you're backpacking in 30 miles or whatnot uh, you're gonna set yourself up different this is this is my car kit. So if something happens and I have to, or we just go someplace unexpected and we're going to camp and the weather conditions change or whatnot, I can come up with a dozen different shelters using just this. Now I can stake that back down. I can close this off with my tarp clip, cut the convective breeze from going through my shelter. Uh, make better use of that heater so just wanted to show you one other way that the base camp in a bag can be used because the last time you saw it that looked like a pretty big shelter yet here I've created a pretty comfortable enclosed shelter it's gonna keep the rain off me uh, separate me from the damp ground keep everything closed off and I can heat it if I need to or open it up and heat it by the fire the other thing that I can do that I added to the base camp in a bag is I've got a plastic drop cloth in there too so I could very well just flip that back replace the front with the plastic and use it like a super shelter so the alternative is kind of doing like how Will always sets his up with his uh, well, I don't know 6x8 tarp I think that is I think it's a tent smith You'll get some logs, build a leaf bed, got your MMSS. That works great too. But that's the way I was going to do it. But since I had that base camp in a bag, it's like, you know what? I want to try something different. So it ended up working really well, especially once I dug that trench and filled it with the leaf bed. Uh, extremely comfortable. Now let me show you one other little thing that I like. Uh, something I added to the car kit about two months ago. As soon as fall started getting in here, I threw it in there, and if you have it, you're really, really happy that you have it. Now, the traditional guys, you know, we got to do things the hard way, blah, blah, blah. This is how preppers do it. If you're going to make leaf beds and insulate a shelter or something like that based out of a vehicle emergency kit, here's one thing that will make your life a thousand times easier. And as an expanding rake I saw this at Lowe's for 10 bucks and I thought oh my god how much easier would that make life in the woods when you're building some sort of debris shelter is this something that you would pack in I wouldn't but would I put it in a vehicle kit hell yes so I mean this thing expands to a full-size rake and the time that we spent collecting debris, collecting leaves, was cut by pff, one tenth. I mean, it literally took us no time at all to scoop up the leaves that we needed to insulate the ground, to fill up Will's shelter, to fill up the sides with leaves. Just having this, this takes up no space at all in the trunk or the back of your truck or whatever. So if you are trying to make something uh, based out of a vehicle kit then man this will make your life a thousand times easier so 10 bucks something to consider all right so next morning let's talk a little bit about the base camp in a bag uh, this is the first time I used this base camp in a bag in uh, winter conditions got down to about 20 degrees last night that's pretty much an estimate because it was once we were able to get a little bit more of a signal it was 30 degrees after the sun came up so first and foremost the most important thing 
I noticed that I did differently this time is by digging that trench that at least covers as big big enough and wide enough for your torso and filling it with about a foot and a half worth of leaf, compressed leaves I did not feel the cold ground one single bit it's probably the first time I've ever had that experience now, Will's over here in his thing laying on a giant leaf bed he knows <laughs> But I'm usually in a hammock or something like that. But I just, it's something I wanted to try. It took me about, I don't know, 15 minutes worth of work to do that. But when it comes to laying on the ground and insulating you, that it worked perfectly. So that was a good thing. It's either 15 minutes of work or eight hours of suffering. Yeah. Second thing, just up like this, you know, when we had plenty of fire earlier in the night perfectly comfortable like this uh, a little bit later we had a little bit more wood I put this side of the tarp down and what I noticed was it heated up quite a bit so Will's using a plastic drop cloth you know for his hybrid super shelter and he was roasting but even though this is not like an opaque plastic sheet I could I could still put my hand up and feel the heat radiating so I was very comfortable for a long time just that way it was a good ambient temperature in here now later in the night once the fire got a lot lower and I had to zip up the MMSS sleep system that's when I decided to try this thing out so this uh, Mr. Heater little buddy and one propane cylinder is good for about five hours and you would think that I would be roasting out with this thing but I really wasn't it was perfectly comfortable for cold weather camping but I don't see you know I've tried this in my garage now I've tried it in this tarp shelter and I just don't think that this Thing puts out enough BTUs to warrant the money that it costs. It's about 60 bucks. So I'm probably going to return this thing. Wasn't all that impressed with it, but I wanted to try it in, you know, in a closed in tarp shelter. Having all the different tarp clips in this kit allowed me to, you know, cinch up the different corners wherever I needed to and just clamp them down to completely seal it off well it wasn't sealed off when this was running I had you got to have a little bit of, you got to have some ventilation but I was able to cinch it off enough to where I wasn't getting that convective breeze blowing into my shelter and it wasn't it wasn't terribly bad I mean there's no cold weather camping that is wonderful uh, there's always a little bit of a suck factor to it but I really wasn't that cold at all and I was telling Will I realized later in the day I was yesterday I was like god why am I still kind of I'm not burning up with this thing on I absent-mindedly put on a long sleeve <laughs> workout shirt and not a base layer so the only insulating layers I have is this Boreal hoodie and a wool sweater other than that I got nothing so even without that and I wasn't wearing the Boreal hoodie in here when I was sleeping I was fine now the other thing that I noticed from several uses it's it's bunched down in here but I have an SOL escape bivy and most if not all of the MMSS sleep systems that you get online or anywhere surplus they're used they've been rotated out by the Army or the Marine Corps whatever for new ones so they're never going to be truly what they're rated to be they're better than a lot of sleep systems especially when you consider that it's got the Gore-Tex bivy but you can't count on them being rated what you think they are and I have found the last several cold 
weather nights that we've camped with it that in order to make it just right I've had to also add the SOL escape bivy as the inner layer something to consider I was talking to Will earlier and I was like you know what I really want to try is one of those uh, uh, what were they called again the reactors the thermocell reactor Thermarest uh, react yeah, thermo reactor yeah. reactor uh, you know inner bivy bag please bivy bag yeah adds like 20 degrees warmth to your bag depends on which one you get they have several different temp ratings but yeah the, the extreme one is the the red one it adds 20 20 or 35 I can't remember well, like 35 it, or 40 35 if 40. you're get, if the way I look at it if you're getting one anyway why not just get the best one that they sell? Yeah, they have a yellow, a blue, and a red, and all those are different temp ratings. So I'm going to try, I'm, a, I'm probably going to pick one of, one of those up to test it. I think this thing worked rather well. The last thing that I will state after this, uh, seeing the amount of time that we took collecting wood, dragging trees, and all that stuff, when I get to, I'm, I want to do the 10 pound winter survival kit challenge when there's some snow so oh, so it really looks like a winter challenge in Ohio that might push it a little bit longer than the end of December but I want to do it that way but either which way it's gonna be freaking hard uh, we're fully loaded out here we because this was a car kit test and we had that rake we were able to do 10 times the work in one tenth of the time as far as collecting debris to build our shelters, to build our leaf beds, stuff like that. That's not going to be available. Uh, it's going to have to be a shelter similar to Will's. And once I get that shelter bit, I'm going to have to, once I get that shelter built, I'm going to have to spend all remaining daylight gathering wood. Uh, if, if I'm going to get it through to the morning. There's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. We went through a ton of wood last night. I mean, you collect the wood you think you're going to need, and then you get five times more. And then you might make it to morning. <laughs> so, that's that. We were talking about some other types of I shelter ideas that we had that we're probably going to test out uh, throughout the winter. And hopefully by next month we'll have the thermal imaging to add to those videos so you can kind of see the, the way the heat is with the shelters. But overall, once again, I, I think the base camp in a bag freaking worked wonderfully. I know like, like Will, Will was saying earlier, everybody wants to judge preparedness videos based on wilderness survival fantasies about hiking 40 miles out in the middle of nowhere. when most of the people saying that never even freaking do it. I don't do it. Plain wreck in Alaska. I mean, in where we live, the, the, the only place that we have that is that big is uh, down south. We mm -hmm. won't have access to that till next month. But most people just, you got to take the fantasy out of it and just think of the real emergencies. Uh, what if your car breaks down? You got to go a little bit in the woods, built some sort of camp and you've got your kits or something like that this works you know we've done two configurations with it so far we were talking this probably has enough space to the size of the tarp that we could take a couple small trees build a tripod make like a TP shelter and with that then you could really process process down your wood and make a small fire and stay warmer without uh, so much effort, so much energy wasted with the outdoor fire. So that's again, that's something I want to do before spring. Try that out for like maybe the third video with the base camp in a bag. But other than that, that's kind of my findings for last night's test. Uh, these things suck. They're built nice, built really nice, but if you're gonna buy it, if you're gonna get it, some sort of a little emergency heater for whatever, uh, trapped your car or whatnot, that doesn't, it just doesn't put out enough BTUs for the energy used. So I would just skip that one. Uh, 
I, it was it was interesting to try it because I've seen them for a long time and I just wanted to know for myself and uh, I don't think it's worth buying. So other than that, you got anything you want to add? Not really, no. I mean, as far as that heater goes, I mean, maybe if it was in a floorboard of a car, it might do something in that small of a space. But I just, uh, that's for outdoor use. Yeah, I mean, if you were like in an SUV or something like that, you had to make it through the night because, I mean, a, a car isn't really shelter, it's shelter from the rain. It ain't shelter from the cold. <laughs> no, they're it, metal caskets. It, it, you're, it's going to get ten times as cold. So, I mean, if you ran it for a little bit, you know, run it a little bit later, you're not running it constantly because you're going to have to put down the windows a crack. you got to have ventilation with carbon monoxide buildup. Most of these have sensors in them. If they don't have enough oxygen, they'll shut down. So you're not asphyxiating yourself. So there is that, you have to be aware of those risks if you're operating something like this in a closed environment. But anyway, I think I've said enough about that. I think the biggest thing I took away from this is the, the leaf bed trench underneath your tarp, uh, ground tarp. That thing works freaking amazing. I didn't feel any cold whatsoever from the ground, so that was good. All right, guys, I'm Chris from Prepare Mind 101. Thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Google+, Twitter, uh, Manus Outdoors, LLC.com, and the store is at PrepareMind101.com. So until next time, see you then.